Welcome to the Home Care Resource Hour. I'm Rick Ferrante on your hometown station, KHTS. Home Care Services Santa Clarita has produced this show for those in our community who have a senior or other loved one who may need some assistance in their home. Families in that situation often need information, tips, advice. So the staff at Home Care Services has designed this show as a resource for those facing those challenges. So is your family facing some difficulty, maybe in working with each other when they're trying to figure out how to manage your parents' trust or estate? Are there disagreements, arguments, some general, what should we say, dysfunction? I have Kelly Morford of Trust Me Family Trust Mediation and Estate Planning joining us here in the studio. She will be sharing some of her insights into that complex and important topic. And then later in the show, we have Sharon Brubaker, who is a grief recovery specialist, and she will be talking about grief during the holidays and how we can help those who might be suffering during this time of year. But first, let's take a quick look at some of the things that are going on here in Santa Clarita. A lot of events, information, great stuff that you might want to take advantage of. First up, at the Education Center at Henry Mayo Fitness and Health, that's on Town Center Drive, right there in Valencia. On Thursday, that's, uh, let's see, today, yeah, tomorrow, uh, the 14th at 3 o'clock, it's Improving Balance and Preventing Falls. In this course, you will learn risk factors for falls, common household hazards, balance, and the different body systems needed for proper functioning, and interventions to help improve balance and decrease fall risk. Really cool class. These are these are there are a lot of cool classes over at the education center. Take advantage of this, and this is free. So check that one out uh, tomorrow, and that one's at three o'clock. Then to also tomorrow, Thursday, December fourteenth at five thirty, it's diabetes self management. This class will cover many of the basic concepts one needs to know about diabetes and managing but diabetes. Next up, does a senior you know need help working on his or her computer? There are so many advantages of opening up that world. And on Friday, December 15th, at the Senior Center, there's a class, Computer One. That's at 9 a.m. to 10 a.m., and it's designed for students who have no computer experience. Computers will be supplied if needed, and you may bring your laptop. Then one more, uh, or yeah, two couple more. Back at the Education Center of Henry Mayo Health and Fitness, there's Gestational Diabetes Self-Management. This is on Friday the 15th at 9, 9 a.m. In that class, you will gain understanding of gestational diabetes, potential complications, how to follow the right diet that helps you manage your blood sugar levels. So that is on Friday the 15th at 9 a.m. And finally, on Monday, December 18th at 5 p.m., it's practice mindfulness. In this class, you're guided through uh, through guided me uh, meditation and brief discussion, you will explore various mindfulness practices that can be applied to your day-to-day -day life. Chairs, mats, blankets, and cushions are provided for your comfort. And there's one more here, and this one's not uh, coming up this week, but there is a diabetes prevention program, again, at the Education Center. This one's a lot more complex. It's a full year long, and it's a program proven to prevent di pre-diabetes from turning into type 2 diabetes. It's a CDC curri curriculum that is, again, one year long. And the next cohort starts in May 2018. But the space is limited, so it would be really important to get signed up early. A very good class and something you might want to check out at that education center. We have more information on local resources at our website, www.homecaresantacarita.com. And check out our Facebook page at Home Care Services Santa Clarita, where we have more information as well. And again, you're listening to the Home Care Resource Hour. I'm Rick Ferrante on your hometown station, KHTS. So you are in a situation where your family finds that you're making decisions, uh, or you and your family find you're making decisions about your parents, where maybe care is needed, or you're dealing with finances, or their, their estate. And the simple matter is you're not get all on the same page. You do not agree on things, and you're not able to get anything settled. There's frustration, anger. Possibly things are getting out of control, and it's tearing your family apart. Does that sound like something that might be happening or could happen to you at some point? Mediation is a guided communication for those in disagreement to build productive cooperation in order to reach a mutual agreement and put the dispute behind them. We have Kelly Morford of Trust Me Family Trust Mediation and Estate Management joining us here in the studio to help us work this, uh, through this issue. 
Kelly is a mediator and lead operations for Trust Me Family Trust Mediation and Estate Management. As director of contract negotiations and services in healthcare for 24 years, Kelly's experience with finding the balance in difficult situations has made her a highly skilled mediator. She has extensive experience working with families, siblings, blended families, elderly, and wealth transfer issues and needs. Sound uh, familiar to anybody out there? It certainly does to me. She holds a BS in education and an MA in behavioral science, negotiations, and conflict resolutions. Welcome, Kelly Morford. Thanks, Rick. I appreciate you coming in. Okay. Yeah, I can, um, I can <laughs> definitely relate to some of those things and some of those concepts. So what is mediation? What are we talking about here? Well, mediation is really guided communication uh, between two parties that are having a dispute or a disagreement of some kind. Um, my, there's all kinds of mediation, some focus in just civil, commercial. Um, there is family divorce mediation we're seeing a lot more today that sometimes is court-ordered. Uh, I focus mostly with families who are um, going through the process either with aging parents um, and making decisions for them where the siblings are not seeing eye to eye. I also spend a lot of time on trusts and planning and and wealth transfer. Um, So basically the, okay, so let's just kind of peel it back a little bit. So what we see a lot of is we kind of go through a situation where, okay, mom needs some help right? Mom or dad or whoever needs some help at home. Now, there's a huge financial component to that, right? I mean, there's, this is costly. And this is obviously money that's going to be coming from the estate. And it's money for care. It's money for all kinds of things, but that's where we, you know, we see it. And then that's where things start to come together. And when I say to come together, that's not in a good way. So if there's siblings, often, um, oh, mom should be here or mom should be there. This is less costly. This is more costly. And now we've got fights. And, and everybody seems to think, well, okay, we're doing this on behalf of mom or dad. But then we just don't agree. Well, I'll give you a good example, something that you just brought up. If a f- there's a family of four siblings, say, and the mother is, the father has passed away, and mom really needs not to be living by herself anymore for a lot of, for her health reasons. Um, and for her safety, quite frankly. One of the siblings um, says, okay, I'm willing to take mom into my home. I'll get paid the $3,500 that was set aside to care for mom, um, and I'll take it on. And the other siblings say, hey, 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 wait a minute here, because there's issues that they believe this person would not be a good care provider. And that's when the disputes start, because one person wants to take on mom for the financial gain, or possibly, um, and the others have an issue with that and, and would prefer to see her go somewhere else. And that's where mediation comes in and is beneficial for the party to hopefully come to an agreement. The whole idea of mediation is for the parties to reach a mutual agreement. Interesting. So, I mean, just that scenario you're talking about, I imagine a lot of people are sort of, okay, Maybe either I'm, yeah, I'm sort of there, I'm in that situation right now in something similar, or I can anticipate this. I could, I could just imagine this happening at some point where I'm not going to see eye to eye with my brother or my sister about that kind of thing. And it's not always that somebody, one person's doing something malicious, right? They all, maybe both are thinking this is what's best, but just, it's flat out just a disagreement. Is that the case? Well... And like what you just said, sometimes it's not quite a disagreement yet. Um, You can look at personalities or for whatever reason, if families have uh, a lot going on in their life and they feel like having someone else be a neutral party for them will help avoid anything down the road. Um, Sometimes just a neutral party to help conduct the meeting. So it's not technically a mediation, hopefully, Mm -hmm. um, but it's a neutral party. And we do that as well. Now, is this generally going to be financially related. There could be disagreements on all kinds of things, right? 
not just where who's paying or what that kind of thing. It could be just about anything. Right. One of the other sides to our business is professional organizing and how that kind of played in, played into each other is through mediations. Families would agree, okay, this is what this is our plan. The trust says, let's say the trust the parents have already passed away. It's never gets past me when yeah, the trust specifically says what happens to mom and dad's home. And there's an executor who is to make all the legal transfers. and But the other kids, and they all agree on it. And then something happens where, wait a minute, the trust never actually said, who cleans out mom's house? Hmm. And who gets her grandfather clock? You know, I, there are a lot of people who don't ever think, they're going to pass and so they don't plan and they just whatever happens to my things after I'm gone that's that's then it creates a problem for the siblings and if one feels like the others are taking advantage or going in the house before anybody else does to kind of see what they can it 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 changes people um and mm -hmm. and how they behave with each other quite frankly you see a lot of uh siblings that are you know 50 year old siblings who all of a sudden revert back to their relationships with their siblings when they were 10. Yeah no I would imagine this is the, a lot of things kind of come out of the woodwork that were maybe pushed in uh, into the closet under the rug mm -hmm. or whatever you want to say and then that all starts to come out but because of this event or things that are happening and yeah that becomes some negative things. So all right, so we, yeah, a lot of the financial things, estate items, things like that. What about like things like healthcare? Or, or I would imagine there's disagreements about you know how aggressive uh, you know if they're making decisions and 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 there's disagreement on how aggressive should we be with the whatever treatment that mom's getting if it's not spelled out in in you know clearly and accurate and accurately in a trust or something or a healthcare directive. That the, is that a lot also where some of these disagreements come into play? There is. And and just as you had, had described, families don't agree. Or if the parent is still alive and, and is having problems with moving out of the home they've been in for 60 years, um, it, it really plays into people's heartstrings. And, and siblings make every excuse or reason or accommodation to make sure that the parents are, are taken care of. But we see that all the time. Yeah. Okay. So now, explain to me. So mediation itself. So first thing I think of is, um, well, I mean, a couple of things. You know, mediation in like sort of corporate, you know, structure would be, hey, we just want to avoid going in front of a, you know, going on a trial or, a, or in front of a judge because all this money is going to be spent, and then we're going to accept this mediation so that we don't have to spend the money. Now, I'm not sure, help, help me out a little bit. What are we talking about? What is the alternative to mediation in these situations we've been describing that we're trying to avoid by having a mediation in place? Litigation is usually the next step. If you're having a serious disagreement um, and a mediation isn't something that both sides, uh, and I hate to use the word sides, but that if both parties aren't willing to say, yes, I'm committed to the process of mediation with the, I, with the goal of coming to a mutual agreement, then the next step would be litigation. And for m more reasons than just one that I can point out, people do want to avoid litigation. Um, what, not, even for the relationships of it, not just the financial uh, cost that they will see in litigation versus mediation. But I do want to mention that mediation, regardless of, of what kind of mediation it is, when the parties go in, mediation itself is covered under California Evidence Code. And it is upheld in court. So when you sign an agreement at the end, although, you know, attorneys, I also have mediations where attorneys are present. Mm. Um, it, it's something that's discussed prior to the mediation starting. Um, I also let all of the participants know that at the end, when you do come to an agreement, you can also have an attorney review it before, before anything's signed. Um, so it's not something that I'm trying to hide or mediation is trying to hide behind. But um, whatever happens in a mediation, it, it's, it, what I'm saying is it's a real thing. And I think a lot of people look at mediation like, oh, well, we'll give it a try. And if it doesn't work, then, then we'll move on to the next step. And mediation is really intended and works best for people who are committed to making sure that that mediation ends 
in an agreement. And it's an agreement that they need to come up with themselves. And like I said, my job as the mediator is to make sure it stays on track um, and we keep focused and productive. Um, but when you do sign an agreement, as well as anything said within a mediation, it's protected. As a mediator, if there is something that comes up in mediation, whatever it is, a mediator is not compelled to testify in court. So you can feel assured that when parties enter into this, confidentiality is, is a serious thing. That's important. As well yeah. as the agreements that they that they write and they sign, and, and, and they are upheld in court. So it's not just a... You know, well, we'll try it. We'll give it a shot. Yeah, so, okay, so that was an interesting thing. So if they go through and they have all this back and forth, back and forth in, in mediation, they can't then say, well, because of that, I can use that against you in court. No, you cannot. I see. Yeah. So this is like, yeah, let's clear the decks here, and it's a really good way. It sounds like, you know, in, instead of court being a, an actual battle, you know, this is where the arm, we're, we're done we're done with diplomacy. We're now into battle. Whereas mediation is, let's try to get this actually done with diplomacy, and let's kind of actually, uh, you know, try to figure out a find a common ground and have somebody, a third party though, help us do that before we hopefully not have to end up in battle. Is that a good yeah. analogy? There's a popular saying with mediations, and it says, "You know, you've got a good mediation if both parties walk away feeling like they didn't win." Um, you know that some serious compromise had happened in order for the parties to say, let's get this settled. And hopefully, the you know, in my kind of mediation, I do see that there's relationships on the line. You know, if you're in a civil or commercial or construction mediation, you don't see that as often. But mostly what I see is the relationships that are there. <clears throat> Excuse me. So... Um, yeah, so it's basically, and, and the way I think of it, I see it a lot of times, because we do, we see this all the time where, I mean, there's families that are just kind of roll, rolling along, and these situations happen with parents, or and and it just tears them absolutely apart. So what you're saying is, is in terms of mediation, especially the way you kind of apply that, it's a little bit of like, let's try to keep this together, so that it isn't torn apart as a result of this, in spite of the fact that everybody doesn't agree, and then we got to, but we got to kind of find some common ground. Otherwise, we're just in the big battle, and it's not gonna, it's not gonna end up good. Right. And and if you have four different sets of blended families that are part of it, it it can be very costly. You know, you get an attorney to represent both sides. I do want to mention that um, I'm a compliment to a trust attorney and a family attorney, and no way do I try to, I, I'm not a competitor. In fact, my relationships with attorneys are vital because I don't write um, trusts, and there's so often that I, I don't read trusts. I can help you know, with the processing and settling, and you know, another thing is there's people who are not in dispute, but have become so older themselves that they for whatever their reasons, um, they choose to not uh, settle the trust and actually be the feet on the street. And so that's a way that, that also people use mediation or a neutral party. You could call us anything, but uh, if there's a dispute, typically it's a mediation. Otherwise, it's, it's guidance and protection and under a, a neutral party or a safe zone. Yeah, it sounds like it's, uh, you know, in my mind, when I'm looking at it, and it's sort of at a more um, just a consumer level. It's sort of a family saver. And it's a situation, and then certainly money saver, if there we get to that point where things get, you know, way out of hand, and we do end up having to go to court, which this doesn't preclude, right? I mean, like you said, it, it hopefully does. But if we have to continue there, this doesn't mean that you don't have any rights beyond that, beyond this mediation. Again, any kind of discovery that was that happened within the mediation is protected. Right. And so it's a difficult thing. I will tell you that I have never done a mediation that ultimately ended with going into a litigation. So. Wow. So that, I mean, that right there tells you that there is at least, it's a good, um, I mean, take, why not? Why would you want to go this whole route of the war when you can try to settle something beforehand? And I think a lot of people don't realize that that's out there. Um, so 
when who who are those people? It's just about anybody that can kind of contact you and say, you know, this is where I'm having trouble, or it's just anybody. Right, anybody, as well as what you mentioned earlier. Even if you can foresee issues, or you just don't want to work with, I've I've got people that contact me that don't want to be the ones to, that say, I don't want to be organizing the meetings. I don't want to be contacting and telling my brothers and sisters when we're going to do things. So. Either way, they can anybody can call and, and schedule an appointment, um, an introduction. We actually have some specials too going right now. It's there are some get to know me specials. <laughs> awesome. Well, let me let me kind of got, kind of set this up. So I mean, this is just in general, and we can kind of go through it real fast. But the um, I mean, what a great resource just for Santa Clarita and for our families. Um, appreciate your willingness to come here and kind of talk about that and go through all these things. So how can somebody get a hold of you, first well, of all? I have a website. Mm -hmm. It's trustme-pro.com. Okay. Um, my phone number is also, it's 661-666-1666. Uh, uh, or you could Google Trust Me and, and trust Mediation. Me and, and, it was, mediation and it was okay. trust me hyphen pro. Dot com. com. Okay, yes. just to make sure. Yeah. Everybody get that to <laughs> slow it down there. Okay, and if you want more information or other questions regarding this and our conversation or here on the show, you can also contact Home Care Services, 661-412-0710, or go to our website, homecaresantacarita.com. Thank you, Kelly, for being with us. And uh, coming up after the break, it's the holiday season. Nothing but joy and laughter and fun. But for some, the holiday season can be a reminder of what they have lost. Seniors in particular can have, a difficult, have difficulty when thoughts turn to the loss of people that they've loved. We will have Sharon Brubaker on, who is a grief recovery specialist, joining us to talk about how to help those people in dealing with that loss while still enjoying the holidays. That's next on the Home Care Resource Hour on your home town station, KHTS. Mission Valley Bank puts the community in community banking. They strive to be your most trusted bank. Mission Valley Bank is happy to sponsor KHTS Holiday Music. Happy Holidays! KHTS Holiday Music also brought to you by Chiquita Canyon. From all of us at Chiquita Canyon, we'd like to wish you and your family a happy, prosperous holiday season. This year, Chiquita Canyon is proud to sponsor holiday music on your local hometown station, KHTS. Happy Holidays. Canyon Country now has a one-stop printing shop. Feathers, photo signs and printing. Feathers, signs, banners, business cards, embroidery, photo restoration, picture framing, car wraps, all under one roof. Transfer your old videos, slides, and 8mm movies to DVD. Print custom t-shirts and jackets with your team or business logo. Create a banner for your school. It's all possible at Feathers. Feathers, you've driven by them daily on Soledad across the street from the Edwards Theaters. Discover Feathers, Canyon Country's one-stop printing shop. If you're in danger of losing your home to foreclosure, you need an expert. Hi, I'm Rich Sherman with Alta Realty. I've helped hundreds of Santa Clara residents save their homes completely for free. I've got just over 20 years experience and a loan modification success rate of over 80%. I can negotiate better terms with your bank and I can save your home from foreclosure. And again, we do this completely for free. So if you're in any danger, please call me today at 661-714-1400. That number again is 661-714-1400. I'm Rich Sherman with Alta Realty. And I'll be happy to help you save your home for free. There are many memorable restaurants in Santa Clarita, but three words stand out from the crowd. Mom can cook. Mama puede cocina. Mom can cook the best Thai food on this side of the planet. Mama fait la cuisine. No matter what language you use, Mom can cook says it all. Thai food at its finest, all your favorite dishes and Mom's very own original specialties. Experience it on Soledad by the Canyon Country Post Office. Mama alioriga yo yo. Mom can cook. At Advanced Audiology, we know how important hearing is to you, your loved ones, your work success, your safety, and your ability to stay in the game. Most people won't admit hearing loss to themselves or others. We make it easy for you. Today's digital hearing aids come in a variety of styles, including invisible. All feature-rich, providing unparalleled hearing quality, wearing comfort, and automation that simplifies your life. Don't be fooled by our imitators. There's only one Advanced Audiology with the purple sign next to AAA on Valencia Boulevard. Santa Clarita's hometown station, hometown station, KHTS.
Welcome back to the Home Care Resource Hour. I'm Rick Ferrante on your hometown station, KHTS. This is a show for those in our community who have a senior or other loved one who may need some assistance in their home and is produced by Home Care Services Santa Clarita. And we have a few other interesting events going on this week in and around the Santa Clarita Valley I wanted to talk to you about. Um, coming up Friday, December 22nd at Atria Senior Living in New Hall. And that's not actually coming up. That's a little bit Friday, a week from Friday, I guess. They're having a holiday pie giveaway at 10 a.m. So just in time for Christmas, call now to book your tour at Atria on Friday the 22nd at 10 a.m., between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. Specify if you would like to take home a freshly baked pumpkin or pecan pie. Feel the warmth of the holidays being shared by our residents and staff and bring a taste of Atria home with you. So if you set up a tour, you get a pie. Sounds pretty cool to me if you're going to be doing that tour anyway. December 22nd, give uh, Atria a call. Next up, are you a romance writer or interested in learning more about the romance writing craft? We have a lot of seniors that have been in the past, love this subject, and are writers. And uh, something to, hey, take just keep going with this talent. Join the Romance Writers of SCV every third Saturday for a meeting where you can get support with your writing and publishing. Next meeting is on Saturday, December 15th, 10.30 a.m. at the Old Town New Hall Library in the Heritage Room. And next, nothing to do. Come to the library. Make something. and Make something. It's easy. Do-it-yourself crafts for adults and seniors. And they're a fun way to relieve stress and rediscover your creative story. Park. It's called Craft It for Adults, and the next one is on Tuesday the 19th at 1 p.m. That's at the Canyon Country Library in the meeting room, and this craft on Tuesday will be holiday wrapping paper and gift tags. Supplies are provided. And then one more thing to let you know about at the Education Center at Henry Mayo Fitness and Health. Throughout the week and month, there are support groups of different types led by Henry Mayo Hospital staff and staff of other organizations in our community. They're free, so take advantage of this, people. <laughs> take advantage of free stuff, and it's right here located at Henry Mayo Fitness and Health, right on Town Center Drive. You go into the Fitness and Health Center and look to the right. It's the Education Center. Um, and they're facilitated, facilitated by community education staff, including Mommy Time, Bosom Buddies, Breast Cancer Support Group, Heart Disease Support Group, Stroke Support Group, Spine School, Lactation Support Group, Grief Support Group, Autism Support Group, and Cancer Support Group. I think you get the idea. So check that out. Contact us at Home Care Services for more information on any of these. And we have more local information on our website at homecaresantaclarita.com. Check out our Facebook page at Home Care Services Santa Clarita, and you can always call us 800-808-4777. You're listening to the Home Care Resource Hour. I'm Rick Ferrante on your hometown station, KHTS. And now I have Sharon Brubaker, who is a grief recovery specialist, joining us to talk to, about how to help those dealing with loss while enjoying the holidays. Sharon is a practitioner of the grief recovery method, which is a unique process that takes the individual through a series of steps that enables him or her to identify the incomplete relationships that have caused pain and prevented them from moving forward, enjoying a more fulfilled and happy life. So it's December 13th, and we are in full swing with the holiday season. Coming into the studio, I noticed that Main Street here is all in New Hall is all decked out and lights and everything else. Well, of course, they're not on right now, but it's all decked out. And there's been much shopping and preparing, and there are plans with families over the holidays. But it is often the case, Sharon Brubaker, that at these moments when there are supposed to be the happiest, that we are in fact experiencing some of those times of great loss. Is that the case? That's absolutely the case. As a matter of fact, on Monday, I got a call from a past client. His wife passed away in February, and Christmas was one of her favorite times. Mm. She loved the holiday, and he loved getting involved with it for her. And he called me uh, in tears. He said, I got the Christmas tree down. I've got all the decorations down, but I absolutely can't put them up. And it's his first Christmas without his wife. And so we talked, you know, quite a bit. And I could tell he, it lifted his spirits. One of the things that's so important is to talk to the grievers right now. Uh, we did a survey a few years back. And 98% of the people that answered their survey, we asked them, what do you think is the best way to help a griever? And they all said not to bring it up. Wow. 
98 percent okay wait a minute these are the people that not the people that are grieving not the people that are grieving. The ones support somebody team. else, right? Yeah. And so their first inclination is, oh, just don't say anything. Don't say anything. Don't bring it oh, up. Oh my gosh. But think about it from this gentleman's perspective. Here he is, his first holiday without his wife. He's got the Christmas tree down, but he just can't put it up. And so what I did was I let him talk. I let him talk about his past holidays, what it was like with her. And to come up with a plan for something that would be a new tradition that he could do in honor of her, but it would be something that he could carry on mm -hmm. from, from here on out. And so we came up with that he's going to come up with a special ornament for the tree, have each one of the grandchildren bring one as well, and they're going to hang it on the tree. Oh, that's some, that is awesome. You know what's funny? You say that. Here I am. Oh, gosh, all these people that the first thing they think about is not to bring it up, right? You know, oh, shock. And then as you're talking, I'm thinking, yeah. I think I would have said the same. Now, maybe I wouldn't have said the same thing because, oh, I just know instinctively. But sure enough, the first thing I could think of, if, I, if I'm thinking of somebody who's had some loss during the year, that's the last, I mean, I'm, it's, it's, it's a reflex, right? It's sort of a knee-jerk reaction to say, I'm just not going to bring it up and hopefully things will still be happy. Exactly. We want things to be happy. That's number one. And we have a few myths that people buy into. And one of those myths is be strong. Be strong for others. So if I'm not bringing it up and I don't cause you to cry, then I'm going to be strong for mm. you. I'm going to help you through. We're going to push through this holiday, but we're not going to bring it up or talk about it. And literally all they want to do is say, I really miss her. She was here. This was her favorite ornament. I remember when we bought this in Solvang in 1979, and she loved hanging it on the tree every year. Mm -hmm. Think about just that conversation. Sure, yeah. And I mean, it's literally the opposite of what you're maybe, like I said, knee-jerk or action thinking to do. It's literally the opposite. I, you know... I haven't, fortunately, and you know I will this sometime have a loss during that year that will be that affecting of holidays. But I could think of just even minor things in, in you know anybody's everyday life. My kids have gone to college, and so you know we normally the kids would you know all be helping with the tree and doing all the other stuff. And you know my wife and I are just first of all it takes ten times longer, and then second of all the uh, the there is that kind of you know, it's there's something, there is a quote-unquote loss. Now, obviously, that's very minor compared to what we're talking about, but that's a little hint, right? That's a yes. little hint of what maybe somebody else is going through on a, you know, a lot more degrees that, okay, um, let's look around, folks. Maybe it isn't just the ha happiest time. Um, there's a lot of people where it's tough. There's a lot of people where it's tough. And um, going back to your comment just a little bit ago, Grief is cumulative, and it's cumulatively negative, so it builds upon itself. So let's say I'm only missing my kids today, and I miss them doing the tree, but it also brings up a time for me back in the past where my dad was never home for the holidays. It, it can attach to other losses in our life, and so the other thing that's really strange is that little tw twinge that you feel in your heart, I really miss the kids can be really blown out of proportion. So the pain can come out in all different ways. We can be crying excessively, laughing excessively, isolating, drinking alcohol, eating excess of food, doing anything we can to mask the pain. So we don't exactly know how that may connect for you, but it absolutely can connect for you. Interesting. So obviously, yeah, those are sort of um, mechanisms, coping mechanisms, or negative coping mechanisms that are self-destructive even. And then, um, but, but interesting, you've got this, what did you say, cumulative effect, mm -hmm. so that it attaches onto other things. So, so let's say there's somebody um, that is going through this loss and then this is sort of that first Christmas or that, or maybe not the first Christmas, but just, you know, this is the time when things start to get rough. So they're not only thinking about that, but the something else that was negative yeah. and somebody else that I've lost. That's tough. I, um, my parents, I know they're going through a lot of this just age wise in terms of their friends and family. I would imagine it's not just, yeah, the one that, you know, is having trouble right now, but, you know, I lost two people yeah. this year. Um, and so is there a, 
different way to approach that? <laughs> or is it sort of I the would, same thing? I would I'd definitely say that we need to talk about it. And, and especially in our parents, we can see when they are uh, less than happy, when they are uh, looking down. And so I would say, uh, talk about the past, talk about uh, the holiday coming up. Most importantly, I think, is to have a plan. Don't just let the holiday jump on you without a plan. Because especially if you're you are suffering from a recent loss, or you're just not looking forward to it. Talk about it. So for example, I would talk about it with my mom. What do you want to do? My dad passed away four years ago. So we came up with a plan our very first year. What do you want to do? How are we going to do this? Where do you want to be? Where are you going to go? It's it's important for me to talk about it with her so that we make a plan for the holiday, but it's equally important for her to tell me what she doesn't want to do. I don't want to do the same tradition that your dad always did. I think that'll be too hard for me. Can we do something else? Mm -hmm. And so we were able to talk about it. So we went into the holiday with a plan and we were able to, to deal with it that way. You're listening to the Home Care Resource Hour. I'm Rick Ferrante on your hometown station, KHTS. And we're in the studio with Sharon Brubaker, who is a grief recovery specialist. So, and we were talking about uh, loss during the holidays, and you were talking about a plan. I mean, that's interesting. So here I am. I've got a situation. I'm, I'm more thinking right now about the people who have a have someone, a senior or other, that they're trying to help, as opposed to the person who's grieving themselves. So that person... Am I walking in saying, hey, mom, or hey, whoever, um, I got a plan for you that we go through and say, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, we're going to do new traditions, we're going to do this, to, you know, that kind of thing. Or do I say, mom, here's a blank piece of paper, <laughs> yeah, and you make a plan, or do we do it together? What is it? What, I think how do you, you think do it goes? together. And for, for me, for example, we're a family of five children. Each one of the kids had a different idea on what they thought the first holiday should be like, right? Oh, dear. Now we're back to my first guess with the mediation, right? <laughs> yeah. So we have to kind of mediate through it. Ultimately, for us, my mom got to make the say, say what she wanted to do. She definitely wanted to do Christmas Eve. She wanted to do that at my brother's house. That was a, a big tradition for her. But on Christmas Day, she chose not to have a big celebration, and she went to the movies with her sister. And we, the supporting children need to be okay with where mom is at that day we needed to be mm. okay and it was tough because it wasn't our normal yeah our normal holiday but we needed to be okay mm. with what that is we uh one of the other things we need to do as the children that supporting the uh a senior and also as a senior we want to go with it. We want to go with it. Don't try to push back against the holiday. If you're pushing back and resisting it, first of all, you're never going to get it to stop. It's coming and it's coming fast. Kind of lean into it. I say it's sort of like riding a roller coaster. You know, if you white knuckle it and push back against it, the ride's not going to be as much fun as if you just kind of relax and let it happen, right? So we're going to do that. Second thing is we don't want to make it too busy. We don't want to fill the time. This is very common. People oh, try to fill yeah. the time with a lot of stuff. We're going to go to the pie ta tasting contest. Then we're going to go to the mall. Then we're going to go see the kids see Santa. Then on Christmas morning, we're going to get up and feed the poor. And then in the afternoon, we're going to go to That's church. That's the first thing I can think of. It's like, let's keep her busy, right? You hear that all the time. Yep. Uh, you know, if we could just load up the day until she wakes up or he wakes up and, and then goes to bed and is busy, then nothing will happen. Wrong deal, huh? That's definitely the wrong deal. And what's going to happen with that, Rick, is she may not feel completely broken that day, but a couple days later, it will hit because eventually the energy will come down and that your broken heart is your broken heart. Wherever you go, you're taking that with you and it's still going to be there. We cannot mask this. We cannot make them feel better and we cannot take away the pain. The biggest thing we can do is let, allow them to talk, support them and be there with them. Mm -hmm. So uh, the the sort of let's make a plan together might be the best thing, but kind of let the other person drive or control the person. Now, here's the thing. One of the things I was thinking of as you're talking, and you're talking about the whole, you know, uh, okay, mom wants to go to the movies during Christmas, but wait a minute. <laughs> this was my Christmas, and, you know, and then the whole thing just kind of blew up. But I get it. But now there's another aspect to this, and help me here with thinking this through. Yeah, mom is having or grandma is having a difficulty because grandfather passed away and have and we're going to do these changes. 
Now, that's her spouse, but I'm grieving a little bit here, too. Yeah. That's my grandfather, yeah. or that was my father, or yeah. that was my mother, you know, whatever the thing is. So, yeah, it's not maybe as dramatic because I wasn't, you know, every waking minute and doing all these things. But there is a little bit there for me or for my brother and sister or whoever it is. How do we get all that? Well, that just added some complexity. <laughs> yeah. So it's the same thing, but on a, uh, on a different level. So, for example, setting up the new tradition is so important because it includes the entire family. So putting those ornaments on the tree and continuing that tradition to go year in and year out is really great for them, right? You also may want to um, get out some old family videos and watch them together, some old Christmases together. That might be something you do on Christmas Eve. You also have to remember that you are grieving as well, and talking about it and talking about Grandpa and what you miss is going to help you and help Grandma at the same time. The same. Being open to talk about it. Mm -hmm. And some people don't want to do that. And so another thing that we can do is we can write a letter. We can write a letter to Grandpa. Just something private that we share, you know, for ourselves, a private, uh, intimate uh, thing that we have. Because what happens most times, Rick, is that the family surrounding support family will try to be strong for the grandma or mom or, you know. Yeah, you're, and, and it's, it's interesting. This is a, with uh, good um, intentions. Yeah. Right? So these aren't horrible people. No. <laughs> these are good no. people that are doing things in a way that they think yeah. are, is helpful and literally kind of maybe go on the opposite. How about kids? Little kids. Where, how does that kind of in integrate with this whole thing where you have, you know, the, the senior and everything, but you got to have, it seems like you, you, everybody's got their own little way to have to deal yeah. with this, right? So the number one thing that we tell you about children is, number one, don't tell them uh, not to feel bad. Don't tell them that time will just heal this. The best thing that you can do for your children is absolutely bring up the conversation. Because remember this, we were not taught how to grieve. Your children were not taught how to grieve, but they're watching you grieve. Mm. And they're watching you go through the grieving process. So if your grieving process is you isolate and go in the room and cry and don't let little Johnny see it, guess what? Johnny's going to go in the room and he's going to cry and he's not going to let you know that he's upset either. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I can do for Johnny is I can say, remember when grandpa was here and he uh, helped us put up the tree and the tree fell and we laughed so hard. I tell a little bit of a story and then I just shut my mouth and I let Johnny start talking about grandpa. And I would imagine there's some, there's some, there's some giving that the child can do for the rest of the members of the family as yes. a result, right? So yeah. whether it's me or it's that senior that's going through this, that's having the hardest time, I mean, there's sort of a waterfall of issues here, but the it's it's not that disc not including them will be better. It's more like, let no, let's get them all in here. Right. All of us need something out of this. Yeah. And that's not going to be, a, if, if, I, if I'm hearing you correctly, that's not going to be a negative. I, you know, you see that a lot. No, no, stay away from grandma. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? My guess is grandma would just love to have Johnny on there, yeah. even if he is having a hard time with this. Yeah. Or do you see that? Absolutely. We see it a lot. Give grandma some time. She's not feeling good yeah. right now. Let's let her isolate because she's grieving. So let's isolate grandma. That's not what we want to do. We want to go with what grandma wants. If grandma wants little Johnny there, then let him be there. The other thing that is also equally as important is to show emotion. If you're going to cry for your dad or for your grandpa, let the kids see you cry. Let them know that tears are okay. Grief is normal and natural. It's a normal and natural reaction to a loss of any kind. Grief is normal and natural, but we're just not taught how to do it. Grieving is part of our process and part of our journey here. We are going to grieve. Every one of us is going to have a grieving experience at some point in our life. So, and just to, you know, we're talking, it's interesting. We're here on the December 13th, and we're talking about such difficult topics and, you know, those kinds of things. But it's important during the holidays. But one more kind of, just to finish that little part off, because all I'm picturing right now is a whole bunch of people on a couch sitting around a tree and everybody crying, which is okay. Yes. Right? Yes. But is it also okay that after that kind of happens or whatever, and there's some Christmas music, and we got a, a glass of wine in us and some cookies, 
Is it okay even to have a good time? Absolutely. Having a good time. And that you're going to bring into it what you normally do, do, right? So for Christmas Eve, the year that my, my dad died and Christmas Eve, we absolutely had the music blaring. We had a great time. It was very festive. Some One of my sisters might have been in the corner crying, you know, saying that she really wished dad was here. But the rest of us would gather around her, we'd give her a hug, and we'd go right back to having fun. Santa absolutely came to our house that year. So the holidays proceed, but now we know we have this one person that is not there with us, and we talk about him, right? So um, the other thing that we want to know is it's equally as important is to set the tone. Mm. you are setting the tone for what the holiday is going to be like. So if you choose to go in the room and shut everybody off, guess what everyone else is going to yeah, do? The, 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 you got a shut off, isolated holiday, yeah. which, yeah, you got to think, well, that can't be good for anybody. Or fun. <laughs> or fun, right. So um, and the senior in particular and the rest of the family, um, wonderful. I appreciate you kind of uh, – yeah, it's tough. I'm almost emotional here going through it because you're thinking about all the you know stuff. But um, let's pick it a little bit up after the break. You're listening to the Home, Count, uh, the home Care Resource Hour. I'm Rick Ferrante on your hometown station, KHTS. The best live theater can be found right here in the Santa Clarita Valley. The Canyon Theater Guild has been entertaining audiences for decades with top quality musicals and plays. Located in Old Town Newhall, the CTG also offers workshops for the young actor in your family. For more information, call the box office at 799-2702 or go to canyontheater.org. If you're tired of your nail polish chipping a day or two after an expensive manicure, then you'll love the Gel Nail Polish Manicure now offered by Anne. Anne is a licensed manicure serving the Santa Clarita Valley in Canyon Country for over 15 years. And now she's offering the gel manicure that lasts without chipping for up to two weeks. Log on to hometownstation.com for details on how to get an amazing deal on gel nails by Anne on Restaurant Row. Or call Anne at 250-8340. Hometown Station, Hometown Station, KHTS. Welcome back to the Home Care Resource Hour. I'm Rick Ferrante on your hometown station, KHTS. And we were talking before the break here with Sharon Brubaker, and Sharon is a grief recovery specialist located right here in Santa Clarita. And we have the holidays, we're right in the midst of it, and we were talking about grief. And unfortunately for many of our family members, especially seniors, who are um, go- have had a loss during the year or recently especially, this is a tough time, and we were talking about a lot of the ways that we can try to help and alleviate that and still enjoy our Christmas. And Sharon, one of the thoughts I had as we were talking about this, and we're talking about families going through all this and putting our plans together and really helping and support, and that's a key. But what point and when do you think it's sort of time now to bring in a professional, bring in somebody, when, and, and then kind of where, is those, where are those steps and, and what happens? So what we say in grief recovery, as grief recovery specialists, we let people know, if you were walking down the street, you walked right out here, and you fell and broke your leg, and the bone was sticking out, right? You'd obviously, (laughs) yeah, very gruesome, but you'd obviously say, Sharon, please call 911, I need to go to the hospital, I need to take care of this right away. However, we do something very different when our heart breaks. We wait, and we wait in the pain. Because we've been told for years and years and years, and we honestly believe this, that time will heal. Mm. Time heals. And yet we walk around with this broken heart, and we choose not to even put a Band-Aid on it. And that's what's, that's what's really hurtful. So I would say, as soon as possible, contact someone to help you. It's action within time. It's the action steps that you do within time that help you. So literally doing your grief work I call it your heart work, absolutely going after that, reviewing your relationship with your loved one that is lost, being able to say goodbye to them, being able to say hello to the future. All of those things are the things that that need to be done and should be done right away. Some people wait. 
Yeah, and I would imagine it's when you get to the point where you're stuck, it's, yeah, it's kind of too late because you've sort of, there's a lot of, you almost have to back up then and start all over. Why not start from the beginning? Start from the beginning. And it's not that it's too late. It just means you have that much more work to do. More work to do, right. Uh, This year I spoke at a senior center, and it's really interesting. Seniors definitely buy into Time Heals. I got up to speak, and it was a group of seniors. They were all having lunch. And I thought, you know, they're really going to relate to this topic. Within a few minutes, they all turned to each other and completely stopped listening to what I was saying and started talking. And it became evidently clear to me. They came up to me one at a time and were sharing stories. There was a lady in there whose daughter had died uh, 15 years prior. A young, she died young of a heart attack. And she told me, I know that I'm going to take this pain to my grave. Seniors absolutely buy into that time heals, that there's nothing you can do, that you have to just suffer through this pain. Mm. And that's absolutely not true. Yeah, there's a real misconception. Well, I kind of, kind of, um, matches up with the be strong yes. thing, right? Mm-hmm. So, and, and that's part of it. Yeah, ignore, be strong, uh, do other things, kind of just race through life and then and then know that or, or think that it's just always going to be there and that's what I got to live with. And that yeah. is part of my strength is the fact that I just got to deal with this every waking hour. Yeah. That's tough. I mean, and, it's tough. and that's kind of a generational thing. Um, yes. Well, I don't know. It's... Could be yeah, everybody, but, I, but I it, really find it with well. that with seniors, and that was very interesting to me. Now we can push the pain down. You can absolutely push this pain down, but Rick, I'll tell you, it's going to come back up, mm-hmm. and it'll come back in other areas, and it'll be strange to you. You'll be completely upset that you were driving down the street and you got a flat tire, and you're completely overreacting. When in actuality, when we look at that, it's really that. I remember my dad was here and he could help me with these flat tires and now he's no longer here. My husband used to take the trash out. Now I have to deal with it. It's Mm -hmm. all of those things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the, uh, the, uh, the whole thing is kind of, uh, deal with it and don't, and, and a professional is just part of that dealing with it. Yes. And, uh, but if you wait, then you're, yeah, you're going to just start over again. (laughs) And so if you wait a year, well, go back a year and start there. (laughs) Yeah. Well, really, Sharon, I appreciate you. You're a great resource for um, all of us here in Santa Clarita, um, seniors and others. And, it, and when I say seniors, in this case, it's the whole family. And how can someone get a hold of you? I'm at SharonBrewBaker.com. That's B-R-U-B-A-K-E-R. And, or you can email me at Sharon at SharonBrewBaker.com. Perfect. And if you want information or have questions regarding our conversations on the show, you can contact us at HomeCareSantaClarita.com uh, on our website or call us 661-412-0710. Find us on Facebook at Home Care Services Santa Clarita. And that wraps it up for this time. Join us again every second Wednesday of the month at 12 noon for the Home Care Resource Hour. I am your host, Rick Ferrante of Home Care Services on your hometown station, KHTS. KHTS.